So, um, as the public sector continues to face challenging fronts, challenging times on many fronts, it's important that we continually find new ways of working and continually improve. And some of our councils are, hitting, are taking this challenge head on. They're seeking opportunities to reimagine public services and what the council of the future will look like. Um, we're all beginning to see councils adopting a digital first mindset um, and looking to do things digitally differently, not just in terms of improving efficiencies but, and making savings, but most importantly in improving outcomes for our citizens. But digital is far more than technology. It embodies a collaborative and user-centric approach that brings us to do things, things both smarter and differently. And the purpose of Shared Digital today is about bringing together those in involved in enabling digital public services. It's about um, us linking up with peers, learning from each other's experiences, and discussing the challenges and opportunities. And so at this conference session, we have an extensive program of council-led peer-to-peer roundtable discussions. And it's therefore a great pleasure to open this year's conference and to welcome you all here today. Our first keynote speaker is uh, Joanne Lancaster, who's the Managing Director at Huntington District Council, where they've been collaborating with local partners to experiment in new ways of working, in particular around the digital and prevent agendas. So Joanne's keynote uh, address is intriguingly called Digital Snake Oil or Solutions um, from an analogue perspective. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Joanne to the stage. Um, I'm at that age in life where I need glasses or I don't need glasses, so I'll be flicking these up and down. Sorry if it's a bit of a distraction, but I'm still getting used to them. Um, so first of all, thank you very much for inviting me here today. Um, you know, I've read the, the context for the conference, and my understanding is that it's, it's about creating an environment where people can share best practice, exchange good ideas, um, with the, the, the prime outcome, as, as Sandra said, about transforming local authority services. Uh, to help our residents and citizens be the best that they can be. Um, so I'm going to share some ideas from Huntingdonshire. Um, just before we get into any detail, um, for those who don't know Huntingdonshire, it's, um, it's an old county, it's not a unitary, it's a district. Um, and that in itself is quite significant. So in terms of our geography, we're heading towards Cambridge. So we're immediately west of Cambridge, basically the junction of the A1 and the A14. And you'd think being in that location, that we're knee deep in tech and amazing telephone signals and 5G, we're not. Um, so I'm a child who grew up in the 70s, and if you say to people like me, digital, um, that thing on the top left hand corner is what I think of as digital, it's a Casio digital watch. And when I was a kid, that was the height of future. Um, and if you use digital these days, it conjures up all sorts of different images in people's mind. Um, and what you end up thinking about um, as, a, as a public servant is how we convey some of these things when people's perception of what digital is, is very different from yours. So those are just some, some random examples. Um, but, you know, I would advocate very, very carefully thinking about language. And one of the things hopefully you'll find in my presentation this morning is that I'm really not a tech expert. So what is digital? Um, digital for me is, is a catalyst, um, and it's a catalyst that, that drives uh, business improvement and innovation. Um, it is based around technology, but more fundamentally, um, for me, there are different components to this. Um, and uh, what I'm proposing to do is just take you through um, my perception of what digital is and how we're using it at Huntingdonshire. Um, Digital in itself has become a prefix for lots of things, and we have to be very clear about what we're talking about when we talk about digital. So for me, digital has four components. It is about a mindset, it's about an approach, it's about technology, and it's about outcomes. So in terms of um, the mindset uh, element, it's... See, I should have stuck with the box, shouldn't I? Um, the mindset, it's, it's about a digital mentality um, which enables people to think in a more agile way. Um, it's also about accepting failure. I know failure isn't a very popular word in local government, but for me, there has to be something about being able to fail, but fail fast. 
Um, and for us, we've embraced this idea that the, the digital mindset allows us to do that. It gives us permission. Um, there are some other strands to it as well. It is about a culture change, but it's also building relationships. It's about the power of networks. Um, and it's a bit of a personal obsession for mine, and I'll show you some stuff later. It's about a thirst for data and how we use evidence. Now, I'm not going to say any of this has been easy to, to shift in, in to colleagues' minds sometimes, but it's part of a much bigger picture. So that's mindset. In terms of the approach, um, it, as far as I'm concerned, digital is driven by a mindset. Um, it's an approach that delivers what I've called incremental improvements, marginal gains. So for those of you who follow um, competitive cycling, you know, the legendary Dave Brailsford and, and his obsession with, say, with, with shaving elements of a, of a second to improve Team GB's track cycling performance. I'm not saying that my digital team are as great as Dave Brailsford's cycling team. Sorry, Tony, one of my directors is here, so I have to acknowledge that. But, but, you know, but it is about that incremental change. What we're not trying to do is create a revolution. It is that thing about evolving slowly, taking people on a journey that's quite comfortable for them, but just every so often bumps them along in a slightly different direction. And the approach um, uh, around incremental change has just become a lot more palatable in, in our organisation. And certainly, if we judge it by customer reaction, it's something that our customers are finding a lot easier. Um, the final bits on the approach uh, for, for me and how we do things in, in Huntingdonshire um, is, is that we're... Um, we're quite keen to innovate, but we take we take the time to pilot stuff. We test and we trial, um, and you know we, we we take the approach that if you try something uh, on a very small scale and it can be scaled up, that's great. It doesn't always have to be scaled up, though. That's a, a critical distinction, um, and we're incredibly open to feedback. Um, feedback is something that we work really hard for, and it starts from just that human interaction. Um, and and my directors and I do it all the time which is, you know, if we have a meeting, the response will be, so how, how was that? Is there anything I could have done differently? Um, and we encourage that throughout the organisation. Um, and it's something which is absolutely understood as core to our values. Um, so the third element of my definition of digital is about technology. Um, but the technology is serving the approach and the mindset. It isn't technology for technology's sake. Um, if, you, if you take it from a rational point of view these days, the internet is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It's something which is um, in everybody's lives. Um, but what we don't have is a universal understanding of the potential of it. Um, and what we're trying to do is find a way to open up the opportunities of exploiting technology in a different way. And I'm sure that a lot of you are doing this in your day-to-day -day existence. But what I would say is just you need to be really careful about how you work with some of the frontline services. Because if you're in a professional um, service area, the chances are that um, it, it, unless you're a relatively young person, you won't have been trained to explore the opportunities that digital is allowing you to exploit. And as technologists, the challenge that I put to you is how you convince and convey some of these opportunities in a really simple way um, to some of your frontline services. Um, and just, just to finish off on the technology bit, what I would say, and I said to Sandra at the outset, some of the things I'm, I'm saying, you know, some of them are deliberately provocative, so I'm more than open to challenge on some of this stuff, but I would say that digital is not about tech. The technology is there, it's an element of it, but it is not all about the technology. And then the final bit of my definition of digital is about outcomes. Um, we use a lot of data in our organisation, um, and it's put big demands on us because we don't always have the full range of skills to really deploy to take best advantage of it. Um, by capturing data, we end up with a lot of self-optimization um, because digital creates a different ambition for how we use some of that stuff. Um, we are improving um, um, business efficiency, but for me, digital is about improving outcomes for citizens, for customers, for service users. Um, and we always start with a few basic questions in Huntingdonshire, um, and it literally pervades everything we do, which is what, why, and how. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? And only then do we get on to how are we going to do it. And quite often, digital is in the how box, not always in the what or the why. 
So, a few questions to leave hanging before I move on uh, to slides. Does your organisation have a digital strategy? And if it does, does everybody know about it? Have your, have your operations had examples of transformation based upon the power of digital? Are your management ranks filled with digital natives? In fact, is your organisation filled with digital natives? If the answer to that is yes, that's brilliant. But I would say that your communities aren't. Um, and then also, just a final point on this slide before I move on. Um, be aware of jumping on bandwagons. Um, one of the things that public services like to do is we get obsessed with things that might be the solution, hence my title at the beginning, um, snake oil or solution. Um, digital is being seen as the thing of the moment, and all of us are spending lots and lots of money on buying stuff. There has to be something which justifies this, which demonstrates why we need to do it, and why we need to do it in the way that we're doing it. I'll now resort to my little button. Um, so this image um, is, is all about potential. You'd think where I live and work, Huntingdonshire, as I say, we're knee-deep in, in all of this exciting stuff. Um, but it's really difficult to convey the potential of some of this. Um, and, you know, I only know what I know. So when my colleagues come to talk to me about the latest great idea, um, it takes a while for me to get up to speed, and I'm not the only one. Um, but I think people in this room have the skills uh, and the knowledge to help people like me see the potential and support you in the work that you do. Um, so I would suggest that there's, again, more questions. I quite like asking questions. Two questions for you to think about when you're speaking to the people who hold the pen in your organisation or the people who have the checkbook, because those are the people who you need to really persuade, which is, um, what is the problem you're trying to fix? Can you simply state it? How, how do you define it? Um, and then also the second question, which you need to be compelling and convincing on, is what are you trying to achieve? If you can answer those two questions, people like me are more willing to sign the cheque. So, before we go too much further forward, I just want to take us two or three steps back. So what is the issue that we're trying to fix? What are we trying to make better? Um, I don't know whether many people recognise the chap on the top left. We've got any history students in the room? It's the late great beverage of the beverage report. Um, so he was the man who arguably uh, put the foundation stones in place for local government as we know it now. Um, and he did lots of work in the 1940s um, based upon some of the researchers that people like Booth did in the Victorian times uh, around how to deal with the problems of urban poor. Um, and what he did was brought it up to date to reflect the situation as we faced it at the end of the Second World War. So he was in the, um, in the space of preparing lands fit for heroes um, and dealing with the problems that had happened um, during the war and how we were going to create a, um, an environment within which the country could A, recover from the war, but B, move forward and thrive into a new environment. And the stuff that he did in his very famous report, he did two reports actually, um, but the one that was used to form the, the, the um, foundations of local government, if you look at that document today, I haven't read all of it, I've looked at some of it, you would recognise local government as it exists today. It hasn't changed in all that time. Um, and the work that he did um, has set us on the direction that we have now for public services. <clears throat> so it really hasn't changed that much, local government. Um, and, and what we've got to deal with um, are still the issues that we talked about, or that Beveridge talked about. Um, it is about the environment. Um, I've done a sort of summary list, and most things that local government does will fit into that list quite neatly. Um, but how do we do these things um, in a system where we have less money and more demand? Um, and, and also where we're quite risk averse? So again, I don't know about your own organisations. Um, I'm trying to change some of the risk aversion in my own organisation, but we tend to create complexity. If something happens that's bad, 
We put another loop into a process to make sure it doesn't happen again. And we end up with these incredibly long chains um, of controls to reduce the risk of something bad happening. Now, the reality is that we're dealing with people and we're dealing with unpredictable demands. And the chances are that something bad is going to happen at some point, no matter how many processes we put in place. Um, and what I'm suggesting um, to you is that we have to find a way to manage the rising demand and the basic uncertainty in our system in a way that reduces the risk. And some of that might be to take people out of the delivery chain. So some of it might be about automation. It may be about taking out that human judgment. That could reduce risk. I'm not saying it's suitable for everything, but it's an opportunity to reflect on. Um, and the reality for us in local government today um, is that we have less money. Depends on the nature of your organisation. My own organisation, I've been there now seven years. I've taken 18% uh, out of the budgets. Um, but for counties, for upper tiers, I know some of you will have had to take 40-odd percent out of your budgets. It's absolutely crippling amounts of money. Um, and with that sort of money going out of local government, we still have increasing demand because the poor are still getting poorer and the outcomes that people are experiencing are not improving. Um, we've also got into a cycle of not innovating because we don't have the time or money to think differently. Um, but more fundamentally for me, we're not tackling the root causes of some of the stuff that sits behind the beverage issues. So if people are poorly, <coughs> timely cough. Um, we try, you know, so for me, I'll take my throat lozenges, and that's better. Actually, there's a root cause to this, which is probably I'm not looking after myself very well, and I should take a bit more care on that. And we, we tend to put sticking plasters on things. Um, so what the digital agenda is allowing us to do in Huntingdonshire is to take a much, much more fundamental look at what we do and how we do it. Um, and I'll come on to that on a, on a later slide. So <clears throat> what I want to do now is, is move into a bit more detail. I've got a slide that um, you're not going to see all the detail on this, but there's a really interesting report that's been released very recently. Um, it's a review of the Marmot Review um, into Health and Social Care. And he did a follow-up report which was released last month, which was looking at his conclusions 10 years on. And what it was doing is looking at health outcomes um, and how we are as a population changing. Basically, <coughs> these two lines show life expectancy. Um, and what they show, you won't be able to see them from there, but the slide deck will be... Um, released for you later on so you can have a look at it in a bit more detail. What it basically says is, over time, over the last however many years, life expectancy has increased incrementally every year. What Marmot's review has found is that it's flatlined over the last 10 years. And indeed, in some parts of the population, basically women in the most deprived communities, it's actually declining for the first time since the Victorian times. So we're in a situation whereby the outcomes that local government are seeking to influence are changing around us. And our current operating model, I would suggest, has to change. And that's at the heart of the digital agenda for me. <coughs> I'm just going to keep coughing now. Excuse me a minute. <coughs> right, that'll be better for a moment anyway. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd suggest that you have a look back at some of this data. So, um, next bit I just want to take you into is the context of local government before I get into Huntingdonshire in a bit more detail. So, these are two quotes um, from people who may or may not be familiar to you. Um, they're legends in their own lifetimes, both of them. So, Jo Miller used to be chief executive at Doncaster. She's now living it up somewhere in New Zealand. Um, she's the chief exec at uh, Hutt City in New Zealand, I think it is now. Um, but when she was president of the Society of Local Authority Chief Execs, her opening speech at our conference, uh, she came up with this great, great quote, um, that the pace of change has never been faster and it will never be slower. So it's here to stay. Run with it or get left behind. And the other one, again, is somebody who I'm sure will be familiar to some people in this room, uh, Chris Naylor. <coughs> And, and he's saying that the stuff that I've just been talking about, the root causes, the complexity that we're working with, it is complex. It is about networks and relationships. But ultimately, if we break it down into bite-sized chunks, it's really not that complicated. 
but we're not taking the time to break it down into bite-sized chunks. And again, one of the things that the digital agenda for me brings, that mindset and that approach, is that we break things down into bite-sized chunks and we think about things in an iterative way, which allows us to be better prepared for some of the challenges that we have. So I'm going to move on to um, a, a bit more detail now about what we're doing in Huntingdonshire. So this, I'm afraid, is a slide that I use quite a lot, um, which is um, my jaundiced view of the world. I think that public service system as it exists at the moment isn't sustainable. It just can't keep working in the way that it has done. Um, we can't keep dealing with the symptoms. We have to get to the root causes. Um, and a lot of my colleagues talk about their objective being to make their council financially sustainable, as if that's the only thing that matters. It is really, really important, but if we obsess about the money, we're just going to get mired into a downward spiral. For me, digital allows us to free ourselves up from that obsession because it allows us to experiment and try different things. So I would encourage you to be bold in coming forward with solutions. Advocate different challenges to parts of your organisation um, and use digital as the opportunity to be a bit disruptive. And I'll come on to that disruptive bit in a minute because I think that one of the things that I would ask you all to do um, when you go away from this conference today is to think about um, what challenges you can put into your own organisation based upon some of the com uh, conversations you're going to have today because there's some really interesting topics on the round table conversations and it would be really easy for you to go back and talk to your colleagues in your teams and not take it any further and I would ask you to just reflect on how you're going to use this stuff because you have a voice, you have an opportunity and I'd really suggest that you advocate um, some change. So the whole system's a bit wobbly as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's um, overburdened, it's bureaucratic. There is a bit of a democratic deficit because not many people turn out to vote these days um, and as local government we tend to look inwards rather than outwards. And when we're looking for digital solutions, we have to start looking outwards. So I've just put a slide up now, which is a health slide. And it's some early thinking around digital application or the application of technology in health. Now, health isn't our core business. But I would challenge any one of you from the organisations that you're from to not have an interest in health. In my own council, as a district, we're doing lots on health. We're not funded to do things on health, and we don't have any statutory responsibilities for health. But unless we all start to chip in, some of these things are not going to change. Now, some of this stuff is things I don't even understand. I did have a very good conversation with my former head of IT about the benefits of gamification. You know, the opportunities to to encourage people to do different things by, by making it more fun. Are we doing that? Not entirely, but we're trying. There's things that we're going to start experiment with. And again, within your own organisations, there will be pictures like this, there will be diagrams like this in people's heads, on people's desks, which are not being used collaboratively. And again, one of the big pluses of digital is that ability to collaborate. We can now work on documents at the same time. We can work in different parts of the world, literally, and have conversations with our colleagues in real time. So use the opportunity that we have to do something different. So, Huntingdonshire. We are a Conservative Control Council. We've been Conservative forever. The recent manifestation, they're sort of at the right-hand side of the Conservative Party. Um, <clears throat> yet this is an extract from their manifesto. And what you see is... There's almost Liberal Democrat type statements here. They are about um, much, much broader approaches than a conventional Conservative Council would be. And this is because we've spent lots and lots and lots and lots of time, I can't stress how much time, talking to them about the opportunity that they have if they are bold and brave and visionary in what they want to achieve. Um, and I would suggest that if you don't get your politicians on board, um, it's going to be quite tricky for you to do some of this stuff. So I have quite a long leash from my politicians. They let me go into places that they wouldn't normally expect their managing director to go into. 
because I've said to them that they can make a difference. They can make a real, a real difference if they allow us to experiment. And again, I'll show you some of the stuff later on um, uh, about what we've been in, uh, experimenting with. Um, and what we've got from them is basically they're happy for us at the moment. And I say financially, it's very difficult for all of us. But I have um, some opportunity to invest money with no guarantee of a return. Now, I would never have thought that possible um, a few years ago, but because of the work we've put in with them, they're happy to commit money to this um, and understand that when I invest in technology or transformation, I can't guarantee them that anything will change on our bottom line as a result of that. So please, again, think about the politicians. They're the people who will need to front some of this stuff up. Um, it's unlikely that they'll fully understand what you're talking about, um, but it's really important because if you want to try and pivot your council's operating model from doing the same that you do now but doing it a bit better, collecting bins, clearing up dog poo, looking after older people, that's great, but actually the opportunity we have is, is a much, much more substantial proposition, which I say is pivoting from doing the things we do better to actually changing the outcomes. Um, and that's the process that we're going through in Huntingdonshire at the moment, which is doing the preventative work and getting upstream of some of the problems. So an example which um, uh, I would use is I was talking to my portfolio holder for the environment about taking the litter bins out of the town centres. Now at the moment she's not completely convinced on this, but I've said why would we spend hundreds of thousands of pounds clearing up litter that people can take home with them? We literally spend hundreds of thousands of pounds clearing verges where people throw things out of their car window. Should we have zero tolerance of this? And again, you know, these are the types of things that digital will allow us to do because we can track people, we can monitor them more closely. Um, the technology that we have on our handsets now means that the street rangers can issue tickets on the spot, check identity, take payment. These things that can be done. Right, so... This is um, a very, very um, simple diagram of our digital um, and transformation focus. Uh, it's a new version, because the version that we had before needed to be updated, and that's another part of the digital agenda at Huntingdonshire. Nothing is fixed. Our strategy doesn't just sit on a shelf and stay there for a while. It keeps moving and will continue to evolve. Um, fundamental to this diagram, digital is not an ICT project. Sorry to break that to you but it's not. Um, and the way that we've positioned this is that it's an all-organisational responsibility. Um, and what we're doing in this diagram, um, so you won't be able to see the details, but uh, they'll be shared with you later, but it captures the focus of what we do, why we do it, and how we do it. Um, so it is about prevention. It is about understanding societal risks. It is about creating a different future for our residents. Fundamentally, it's based on evidence. Um, and how we tackle things in a different way. We then have um, another version of a, a more detailed document, which is our digital ambition document. And again, um, you can have the details of this um, uh, later when it's circulated. And what it's doing there is, um, is expressing in a very simple way um, what we want to do, why we want to do it, and how we're going to do it. Um, and the, the three uh, blocks we've put together are digital council, digital citizen, and digital district and I'll take you through those in a minute. But before I get into those, I wanted to be shameless in admitting that we just steal all the time. We look for good practice everywhere. Um, and that's what we should be doing in that spirit of collaboration. So, you know, I've got details on my notes here. Ellsbury Vale. Ellsbury Vale are legendary in terms of some of the stuff they've done. Um, and again, we're shameless. We'll go and visit them. We'll have a look at what they've been doing, see if there's anything we can learn. Um, they were early adopters on AI, um, and again, you know, we looked at what they had and um, took examples away. Milton Keynes, um, the LGC Digital Council of the year 2018, we've been talking with them a lot um, about how we get the digital economy working better um, and, and creating the right conditions for growth um, for our economy. Uh, Salford, Digital Council of the year 2018, digital leaders. Um, a lot of the work that they did around... Uh, the, the portal and household accounts. Again, we were shameless in working on some of their ideas. Uh, at the time we spoke to them, they had over 50% of their households had online accounts. Um, we're not quite there yet, but again, 
we, we are we're magpies. We'll just um, look for good, uh, good opportunities to talk with people. And again, I'd really advocate using today as the opportunity to harvest the best that other people have to offer. Um, so in terms of um, the stuff that we put here, digital council, citizen and district, um, we asked people what they wanted. We did some survey work, basic things about asking residents what would um, make things easier for them. And that's led to this three-pronged approach. Um, and for us, it offers, offers the opportunity of, of genuine transformation. Um, we target those that are in need. We offer enhanced services, but at marginal costs. And these are all the things that start to make a difference. It's really early stages for us. I'm not saying that we're there. Um, we've taken some initial steps. But this is, this is a multi-year activity. It's, it's basically wired into the DNA of the council now, um, and, it'll, and it'll continue. So I've got a few examples um, I'll, I'll mention very briefly, and I'll happily spend some time uh, later if people want to talk about them in more detail. Um, we did some work um, in one of our communities, one of the villages, had a really weird outlying block of population data. Given its socioeconomic profile, the health outcomes were a bit strange. They were really good, given the uh, populations that lived there. So somebody went to have a look. And it turned out that the GP practice was in the middle of the village. And immediately in front of the GP's practice was a park, a park that the village had built themselves. There was no vandalism on it. It was fully in use. Kids are all over it. And when mum and dad are in the surgery, the kids are safe to play outside in the um, surgery. The local school has a park attached to it. It also has a little shelter where the kids can park their scooters. All of these things are things that the communities have done for themselves. Um, so we went to talk to the GP's practice there and said to them, this is amazing, how have you done it? And we got to talking about things that would help them. And um, they're next to one of our big market towns, um, population of about 30,000. And this is just one practice. We said to them, well, if you've got people coming into your surgery who aren't coming in for health reasons, because this is one of their big issues, how would it be if we built a portal? Just connecting people to, uh, through a touch screen in your surgery where they could look for housing advice or benefits advice. I went, oh, that's quite interesting. And we said, well, we'll build it. We'll put the tablet there, see how it goes. Little things like that, no cost to them, no issue for them it's gone down a storm because it allows people to help themselves to triage some of those issues that would normally take into their doctor's discussions to be dealt with uh, as they're checking in. Um, and we're rolling out more and more of those types of solutions, which is just using everything that we already have, but repackaging it into something different to make it easier for people to help themselves. Um, St. Neots, um, again, this big market town, um, we've now uh, got it set down as a smart town. So we've talked to local companies about um, how we deploy public Wi-Fi and what benefits it would bring for them. And again, we've put a bid in for some digital funding to get that done. Um, we're also building a platform um, for some of our customers to link through to the county council pages, because again, people just know that it's the council. They don't know whether it's a district. They don't know whether it's the county. And if they're not digital savvy, if they're not digital natives, Sometimes it's quite hard to find these things. Um, and my acid test, I have a mother who's in her mid-70s, and my rule of thumb is, if my mum could understand it, it'll be fine. And that's not to patronise my mum. She's an intelligent woman who loves online shopping, so she's really comfortable with transacting you know, big issues online, but she's not that good at finding things online. So we just need to think about who we're aiming for here. Um, and then also, um, I'm going to mention a person who will be known to some of you. Um, so Sam Smith is our head of IT. Um, we're in a shared service, so we provide... She's employed by Huntingdonshire, and she provides services for Huntingdonshire, Cambridge City, and South Cambridgeshire. But actually, Sam's role... It makes my head spin how she does it, but her role is actually bigger than that because we share Sam with the county council. Now, again, 12 months ago, that would have been an impossible conversation to have. How could we possibly share one head of IT with a county council and three districts. Um, convincing the other two districts was difficult enough, let alone a conversation with the county. But Sam now is uniquely positioned to bring us all together. And what we have is a really, really efficient system. 
Yeah, I'll keep moving on. So what I'll do is I'll whiz on. Digital Citizen um, is the first strand. Um, we've got a customer portal in place. As of today, we have 9,393 people signed up, which is a 12th of our population, uh, sorry, 12% of our population with no marketing whatsoever. These are people just finding it. Digital Council, um, we're working differently. We've saved considerable amounts of money um, by investing in technology that helps us all. We have a streamlined system for all of our IT procurement now. We share it across the three councils and it allows us to work better. Our IT strategy is rationalising the systems and it's making connectivity easy for all of us. I can work here as easily as I can work in my office. And the digital district, um, we should be better at this, but we're not. Um, it's the early stages on this one. Um, and what we're going to try and do is actively work with our market towns. 50% of our population live in the market towns, and we're going to use them as the springboard for stuff of, uh, within the district. I've got just a couple more slides. I will, I will this through. Um, I'd like to flash this one in front of you, which is data. Um, I don't know how much things cost, which is really shocking for the managing director of a district. I don't know how much we spend. This is the first time I've ever seen spend broken down by household in my district, and it's taken us about three years to get access to the data to allow this to happen. Challenge in your organisations the owners of data. If you can't liberate it, you need to escalate it, because people like you have the power to do things like this with it. And people like me need to know that. So I just wanted to include that one. So results. We have a culture in our organisation which now means that our managers are digital thinkers based upon those four things that I spoke about early on. They have a clear ownership of the BAU. They understand what's expected of them. I'll just whiz through all of these. Um, they're self-explanatory. I'll keep going. Um, so, reflections. What would I say? It's bloody difficult, this stuff. None of this has been easy. It's been taken some, some nerve in some instances. Some of it has been taken some compulsion to move people along at pace. Um, but it isn't all about the tech. So I'm really sorry to disappoint this audience. But it is, it is bigger than IT solutions. Um, our managers have clear ownership of it now. We're much, much better placed than we previously were. Um, but it takes longer than you could ever, ever, ever imagine. So if you build a timescale, at least double it, probably add a bit extra on as well. Um, but for me, the most important bit on that slide is um, the final bullet point. Have faith in that clear vision. You have to have the vision up front and that you have a fixed endpoint. Think of your customers. They won't understand what you want them to do. You need to nudge them and lead them. Um, help them understand what they can do to help themselves. Any comments on that slide? Sorry? Yeah? There's a sum that's wrong there. One times nine isn't seven. But what you're not saying is there's five answers that are right. As local government, it's always the thing that we do wrong that we get judged on. The fact that I've got five right is the thing that nobody mentions. Oh, yeah, that one, sorry. <laughs> so that one there, yeah. So, OK, I'm being rushed. I told you I wasn't a digital native. They give me the simplest box and I can't get it right. So, yeah, so this slide, this is one that I use when I'm trying to get people to react. There's one sum that's wrong there. Everybody always points out the one thing that we do wrong. This is the issue with local government. We are risk averse. We accept that when we try new stuff, we will get it wrong. We need to be brave and accept that sometimes we get criticised. But if you go back to the slide I showed you about my Conservative Party manifesto, colleagues have said they're going to support me experimenting. And so long as I have political sponsorship, I'm allowed to do it. So definitely final reflections. This is my last slide. Um, I'm confident that there's a strong future for local government and for a digitally enabled local government. We can be efficient and we can be effective. Um, and I think that with the help of the digital technology, with Outlook, with a digital mindset, we can genuinely transform public services into a 21st century public service model rather than the one that Beveridge envisaged in 1942. 
Um, we have to use the creativity of people like you to do this, and I would ask you to step forward and do that, because people like me can't do it on my own. Um, I need you to be enthusiastic, and I need you to be confident, and your leaders will want you to be the same. So please, please step up to that opportunity. Um, we need to plan, and we need to plan to fail, but that shouldn't stop us. And we need to provoke our partners to join us in this, because we're, again, on our own, we can't do this. So um, we can do this um, if we want to fulfill our potential. Um, but the potential for all of this, I think, really, is with the people like you and people like this, uh, rooms like this elsewhere in the country. There are people who know this stuff and see the potential. So please, please, please help people like me release it. Thank you.